Her fierce love for her son, coupled with her faith, enabled her to act heroically in the midst of a great oppression. Tammy Becker here. Welcome to our 52-week Women of the Bible. This week, we are talking about Jochebed. Jochebed. <laughs> the key scriptures for this week we will be reading from is based upon Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. So, we are reading from um, also in the Bible study book by Jean E. Saswarta, and we're following along and doing her study together here during this series. So let's dive into her story. 300 years after the death of the patriarch Joseph, a baby was born in Egypt, and his lusty cries, baffled by a woman's sobs, Jochebed, her heart was tangled in joy and fear. The sun, his fingers forming a tiny little fist against, against her breast, was so striking as a child, so hardly believed that he was hers. And tenderly, she raised a small hand to her mouth, pressing its warmth to her lips. Her gesture calmed them both. She could feel the stiffness in her back dissolving, her muscles relaxing as she watched the night shadows evaporate in the morning light. Slave though she was, she was yet a Levite, a woman who belonged to God, God of Abraham and Sarah, of Isaac and Rebekah, of Jacob, Rachel and Leah, and she knew the stories. She believed the promises. God was faithful. Hadn't her people already grown as numerous as the sand of the sea, just as he said they would? In fact, the Israelites were so numerous that the pharaohs feared they might one day welcome an invading army and betray the nation from within. Over time, the Egyptians had tightened their grip and finally enslaving the Israelites until Beryl's parent they, pro they produced even a greater evil, a command to murder each Hebrew male child and emerging from the womb. So, but the Hebrew midwives feared God more than the king and, and, and they refused to follow his order. So excusing themselves by claiming that Hebrew women were stronger than Egyptian women and giving birth before the midwives even arrived. So Pharaoh commanded his soldiers to search out and smother every newborn male in the waters of the Nile. Jacob Ed could hear the screams of the mothers echoing regularly across the Hebrew camp as their children were torn from them. Her arms tightened around her own child as she slept quietly against her breast. This, this one, she vowed, would never be fodder for the Egyptian river god. She and her husband, Armram, would pray. They would plan and they would trust God to help them. Now for three months, as long as she dared, she hid the infant, managing to keep Miriam and three-year-old Aaron quiet about their new baby brother. Finally, she acted on an idea that began growing in her mind. Pharaoh had commanded her to consign her son to the Nile River. All right then, her own hands would put him into the water, remembering how God had spared the child Isaac. She bent down, laid her son in a basket of papyrus, waterproof with tar and pitch, and then with a whispered prayer, in a last dress, she wiped her eyes, begging God to preserve her baby from the crocodiles that swarmed in the river. She couldn't bear to watch 
as the child drifted away from her. Instead, young Miriam kept vigil, following at a distance to see what would become of him. And soon, Pharaoh's daughter arrived at the riverbank with some of her attendants, spotting the basket among the reeds. Now she sent her slave girl to fetch it. As soon as she beheld the brown-eyed baby, she loved him. So the river had brought her a child whom she would cherish as her own. She could not save all the innocent children, but she could spare one mother's son. Was she surprised when a young slave girl, Miriam, approached, asking whether she could go after a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby for her? Did she suspect the truth when Jochebed gathered the boy in her arms this time as his nursemaid? Questions. Whatever was, was in her mind, she named the child Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. For the next 40 years, she educated him, a prince in the courts of Pharaoh himself, God kept Moses safe in the very midst of extraordinary evil and danger, first in crocodile-infested waters, and then right under Pharaoh's nose. And he used the Egyptians to protect and educate him in ways that must have made Moses even more effective in his role as the people's deliverer. So year after year, Jochebed would surely have reflected on this marvelous faithfulness of God. Her ingenuity, courage, faith should inspire even the most weak need among us. Two women, a slave and a princess, preserved the life of Israel's future deliverer and so preserve the entire Jewish race. This is such a great story because we see God always has a plan behind the scenes. Even if we don't understand it ourselves, we have to trust that he has our best interest at heart, always always has our best interest at heart. So it's time to grab your free micro Bible journaling printable from the link in the description. Get your journaling supplies together and let's get started in our creative time in God's Word. If you're new to this series, make sure and start when you go to the link, you're going to have to start from the beginning with Eve and work your way till you get to this series. And you can watch it if you want, but that's where the, the, the cards start with. So, see you in the downside. Okay, so as we get started, our readings today are from the book of Exodus, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10, where we're talking about Moses' mother, and her legacy in scripture, and her name is Jochebed. And our verse on our microcard today is Exodus chapter 2, verse 2. <clears throat> Excuse me. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was a special baby and kept him hidden for three months. So the questions we're going to summarize our questions one through six and that is in our workbooks from Jean E. Sesuarda's 52 Women of the Bible and it talks really about in summary about how did this family keep the baby quiet how did the mother must have felt in her heart having to place baby Moses and trusting God to basically trust and take care of him. So I'll summarize these questions and just to a summary and really what I find in the lessons we see from Jochebed is the responsibility 
of parents for their children. So as we get started, before I dive into starting into my summary, I'm going to do a little page prep here. And <clears throat> I've got all of my printables cut out. And I'm just going to work. I am going to tip my card in again today and work on the back of it, of the tipping card. And so we'll just follow. Uh, hopefully you got yours cut out and you can place yours however you want. I've kind of got mine laid out a little bit how I'm going to work on the opposite page and draw in with some chalks, a little bit of a, kind of like my interpretation of what maybe a little, a little kind of a river flowing but on the page but again you definitely do what this is your time with the Lord and you do what you feel that is your creative niche just, just want a little bit of color on there to start working in some of my my stickers so so through though Moses's mother had some influence upon her son while he was small you know she had to give him over to be raised in a pagan environment and she trusted God to teach him the way and he's you know and spare him at birth so we find a similar situation like this back in, in, in the story with Hannah and Samuel so likewise we as parents often wonder what influences we have in a society that has so much influence over the children today to the side like she's put the baby into the water here so our responsibility is to is to really teach them as well as we can our children teach them as well as we can and commit them to the Lord for his training and his purpose because if we do that and we give them to the Lord he is going to take care of them for us I was looking for that little lily pad. So over in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 13, is a good verse to claim. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. His ways are not our ways. God knows exactly what our children need. He can do in much he can do a much better job of drawing them to himself than we can. And we'll put up at the top up, up here Pharaoh's daughter gets Moses out of the water. Kind of like a timeline, if you will. So teaching our, our children the faith of the fathers was one of the Hebrews parents chief obligation and it was Moses who later received God's law who commanded parents to teach them diligently unto thy children and talk of them when thou sitteth in thine house, and when thou walkest by thy way, and when thou lieth down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy head, and thou shalt be a frontless between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of the house and the gates. And that you can find in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7 to 9. 
God has his way of teaching our children when we commit them to him. And he also gives us instructions on discipline and training all throughout his word. I'm just kind of putting my stickers on my little tip in. It must have been hard for Jochebed. First she hid Moses for the three months. But as we know, she trusted God. She hid him. She placed him in that basket and sent him upstream. And she sent Miriam, which we're going to learn about. His sister was 10 at the time to follow him and then she saw Pharaoh's daughter pick him up and so she was able to all by God's will had that perfect plan offer up a nursemaid which just happened to be Moses' mother <laughs> so Moses had his mother anyway now We see that Jochebed, Moses' mother, was indeed a good mother. She wanted to keep her son alive, and with the help of her family, was able to keep him quiet. She placed him in that basket. She trusted God to take care of him, and God did just that. And he even allowed her to stay in his life. So despite um, being, you know, even though that Moses was taken by the pagans, he still had his true mother in his life. And when it was, when the time came for Moses to do God's will, we see that God really did have the victory and everything. God had a plan and it was God's victory plan. prevailed so Jochebed was was a good mother I can't imagine all the things that that these women went through in the Bible but it sure is a great reminder for us today as we we learn about them to remember that we didn't we weren't going through their their times in life at the time you know it's it's nice to to really think about their traditions and think about instead of just the storyline really what did they go through what was happening in their life at the time you know because we don't really know unless you dive into these stories other than just you know little by little so what I'm going to do, guys, is I am just going to add, because I really like the glitter, it'll bring this water a little sparkly out on the page when it dries. Make the water kind of stand out. I'll let that dry, but it always looks so pretty. And then I'll tip my card in, and that's it. That was a fantastic lesson today. Once again, I love learning about these women each and every week. 
And if you want to dive deeper into their story with us, go ahead and please do so by joining in our Faith Pod um, over on the website. That's www. YOUministries.com. You'll find the link in the description of this channel. Join us over there. We have four more printables each and every week, along with the lessons to give you a more deeper dive and more creative time in the Word of God with these women. And if you want to, and you like to study the Bible with other women, you could join us over in our private Facebook group, and that's called Girl Read Your Bible. We also have a podcast you might be interested in, and that's called the Almighty God and Gospel Girl Podcast. And if you haven't done so already, please hit the notification bell and subscribe to my channel because that way you'll know each and every week when the next episode drops and you can get all your journaling supplies printed and ready as we get started in a creative time together. So that's it for this week. I will see you next time. This is Tammy Becker. Bye.